Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you a new Nancy Drew analysis video. Today's video is brought to you by the patrons over at Mystique Manor and by all the official fellow detective channel members. If you too would like to support the channel and gain access to exclusive features, check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten to become a patron or click join next to the subscribe button to become an official fellow detective. One of my favorite things to do is to rank and arrange the Nancy Drew games on a particular parameter. I've done this before in many a Nancy Drew analysis video, ranking them by scare factor, soundtrack quality, difficulty, and cover art. Today we're going to tackle a new parameter, one that I think is really interesting to think about from a literature analysis perspective. Darkness. People likely define the darkness of a game in different ways, which is precisely why I think it's so interesting. A theme that may seem dark to you might be completely harmless to someone else. In my opinion, darkness in a piece of art alludes to a feeling of depth, mystery, and maturity. A dark piece of art feels heavier and just seems to carry more emotional weight than others. This often correlates with scare factor, but this isn't a requirement. A game can be dark without being scary, and a game can be scary without really being that dark. It all depends on the intentions of the writers and the origin of the emotional core in an artistic work. As I sat down to analyze the Nancy Drew games on darkness, I noticed that the games are actually pretty evenly spaced. There's a handful of games that skew very dark, a few more that are quite light, and most of the games end up somewhere in the middle on something of a bell curve. I created five separate categories on a tier list to help differentiate between different levels of darkness, then arranged the games within each level to determine which were the lightest and which the darkest. To explore, we'll go through each category, discuss the games within, and explain their rankings. Because we'll be touching on the themes of the games, certain elements of the games might be peripherally spoiled if you haven't played them. You have been warned. So let's begin at the bottom of the tier list with our first category, Light and Gentle. Games in this category were purposefully designed to be a fun adventure with a relatively straightforward mystery. Within this category, we're mostly dealing with theft and occasionally accidents. The environments of the games are light and airy, predominantly taking place during the day. The environments are also quite safe, familiar, and non-threatening. The games might brush past some more mature themes such as grief or death, but such themes are not the main focus of the game and take a more secondary role to the primary plot. Starting at the bottom in our darkness ranking, we have 33, The Haunted Carousel, 32, Secret of the Old Clock, 31, Danger by Design, 30, Phantom of Venice, 29, Secret of the Scarlet Hand, 28, Warnings at Waverly Academy, 27, Alibi and Ashes, and 26, Creature of Kapu Cave. Towards the top of this ranking, Creature of Kapu Cave can get a little more messy with some family drama and the supposed scare factor of Kane Okala, but this game is basically just a beach and jungle adventure. Similarly, Alibi and Ashes might have arson, but it's mostly about exploring river heights, seeing Nancy's home, and eating ice cream. We get even more light and gentle with games like Secret of the Old Clock and The Haunted Carousel. Both of these games include characters experiencing grief and loss, but the games themselves are in some of the lightest, brightest, and most fun environments of the series. Mini golf, pies, lakeside fishing, and arcade games, talking robots, and ice cream fun days make these games really pleasant. The others fall somewhere in the middle. Danger by Design has some drama, but mostly wacky antics, French food, and cozy activities like painting or baking. Phantom of Venice has a crime ring, but also gelato, low stakes heists, and card games. Secret of the Scarlet Hand has amnesia, but is mostly about exploring a museum. Warnings at Waverly Academy has some dangerous pranks, but mostly teenage gossip, the snack shop, and low stakes academic tasks. All in all, these games still have fun mysteries and adventures, but they weren't designed to be particularly intense or mature. They were meant to provide a more lighthearted and fun option for detectives, and they definitely succeed. I always have a good time with these games, and they're great when you want something a little more sweet and simple. 
Now let's move up to the next category, which I have cheekily named Mistakenly Innocuous. These are the games that end up not being dark, mysterious, or deep, but you can tell the intention was for them to have a little more oomph than they ultimately attained. These games are all pretty adventurous, taking place in intense locations with intense stakes, and yet there's a bit of tonal dissonance, because the actual experience of the game isn't one of depth and intrigue. In order for our ranking, we have 25, The Shattered Medallion, 24, Labyrinth of Lies, 23, Trail of the Twister, 22, Ransom of the Seven Ships, and 21, Midnight in Salem. Is this basically just a list of my least favorite Nancy Drew games? Yes, but hear me out. They're my least favorites for many reasons, one of which is that they were striving for intensity but ultimately did not deliver. Shattered Medallion pretends to be wise and dramatic, but there aren't actually any real stakes, and the dialogue ends up being more confusing than visionary. Labyrinth of Lies falls prey to the same problems. Trail of the Twister was supposed to be a daring tornado adventure, but basically just ends up being a never-ending series of pointless chores. Ransom of the Seven Ships centers around the kidnapping of one of Nancy's best friends, but Nancy might as well be chilling on the beach sipping margaritas for all she cares. Midnight in Salem was supposed to be this terrifying, spooky exploration of the literal and metaphorical ghosts of Salem, but quite frankly wasn't really successful in any area, and therefore certainly not in its tonal delivery. All these games wanted to be darker than they were. They just didn't succeed. Now let's talk about the category right in the middle. Spook factor, but not dark. The majority of this category is classical era Nancy Drew games with a couple additions from the Renaissance and modern eras. These games were all clear in their intention, have a strong mystery, have the setting play a major role, and include some straightforward scare factor. Most of these mysteries deal with mysterious accidents and or hauntings. The culprit is almost always after some sort of treasure and decides to Scooby-Doo villain style cause mayhem in order to find it. This is the largest category for a couple reasons. One, it's a tried and true mystery formula that is beloved by mystery fans, and two, it strikes a happy medium by allowing for danger and intrigue without making players feel too sad or think too hard. In our ranking order, we have 20, White Wolf of Icicle Creek, 19, Sea of Darkness, 18, Treasure in the Royal Tower, 17, Stay Tuned for Danger, 16, Tomb of the Lost Queen, 15, Secret of Shadow Ranch, 14, Danger on Deception Island, 13, Message in a Haunted Mansion, 12, Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon, and 11, Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake. In this category, we say games like Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake, Secret of Shadow Ranch, Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon, and Message in a Haunted Mansion that rely heavily on scare factor, but the ultimate plot centers around a historical treasure and the emotional core revolves around long dead characters with interesting secrets. This category also brings us games like Stay Tuned for Danger and White Wolf of Icicle Creek, where the danger facing suspects is very real, but the motives aren't really that deep. The remaining four games all involve a historical treasure, not much scare factor, and some interesting emotional moments that touch on deeper topics, but ultimately aren't the primary focus of the game. For example, Gunnar's tale in Sea of Darkness or Dexter's backstory in Treasure in the Royal Tower are really deep and meaningful, but they're peripheral to the plot. They add some intrigue, but the game itself doesn't become overwhelmingly dark as a result. We now move up to the second highest category on our tier list, Mature Audiences. This category includes the bottom half of the top 10 darkest Nancy Drew games, in my opinion. Compared to the lighter entries in the series, these games more directly address real-world problems and or real-world danger. Scare or spook factor is involved in some, but not all of these mysteries, and the stakes feel much higher regardless of scary moments. For our ranking, we have 10, Curse of Blackmore Manor, 9, Legend of the Crystal Skull, 8, The Final Scene, 7, Secrets Can Kill and Secrets Can Kill Remastered, and 6, The Silent Spy. Curse of Blackmore Manor is predominantly a supernatural mystery with werewolves, alchemy, and superstitions, but at its emotional core is a family undergoing significant changes and struggling to adapt. Divorce, remarriage, parenting, blended families, loneliness, and isolation all play a role. Similarly, Legend of the Crystal Skull may deal with hoodoo and missing glass eyeballs, but also abandonment, resentment, 
greed, trauma, and depression. The final scene centers around an incredibly tense kidnapping, take notes, Ransom of the Seven Ships, and explores desperation and conflicting values. Secrets Can Kill is a murder mystery, and at one point the culprit brandishes a deadly weapon, something that almost never happens in the series. The Silent Spy deals with the likely murder of Nancy's own mother, and explores loss, grief, justice, revenge, and all the dangers that come with legit spy stuff. When we stop to look at the differences, it's clear how much more intense the stakes are in these cases compared to those previously mentioned. Everything just feels more real and higher stakes. But these aren't even the darkest games of the bunch. Fellow detectives, I bring you the highest category of our tier list, Deep, Dark, and Mysterious. The top five darkest entries in the Nancy Drew series. All these games are later in the series, reflecting her interactive's tonal shift as the series continued. Many of them are scary, but more importantly, they are all intense. The main plot and mystery of the game centers around a deep and dark topic directly. These games don't hide things in subtext or require us to fill in the blanks. They are outwardly dark and address some of the heaviest topics life has to offer. To finish our ranking with the top five, we have five, Haunting of Castle Malloy, four, The Captive Curse, three, The Deadly Device, two, Shadow at the Water's Edge, and number one, Ghost of Thornton Hall. Haunting of Castle Malloy starts with a missing persons case, potentially a kidnapping. The atmosphere is cold, dark, mysterious, and oppressive. As the case continues, we learn of the darker past of Castle Malloy and hear the shrieking calls of a banshee. As the case ends, we learn the sad fate of Fiona Malloy. This story addresses the pains of all forms of love, platonic, romantic, and familial. It also explores death and isolation in a location that seems to emanate isolation itself. The Captive Curse tells the tale of a modern monster, fear gripping the citizens of Castle Finster to their core. The dark, foggy woods and cold, dank dungeons and tunnels are intense enough, but the real emotional core comes from the connection to all the missing girls of the past. Are the stories of Castle Finster really legend, or were dark deeds of the past covered up with the legend as a convenient ruse? The Deadly Device shows the lengths that people will go to for money and power, and the acrobatics they'll engage in to protect their own interests and egos. A murder mystery is dark enough, but this case really delves into the darkest instincts of humanity and calls into question the role that values, self-interest, and greed play in our lives. Shadow at the Water's Edge drips with darkness, just as water drips from the sleeves of the Yuri. The game centers around the Yuri, an angry, vengeful spirit, and the tensions experienced by a family with different goals, dreams, and ways of processing grief. All the characters are swamped with regret and indecision. They all seem to fight within themselves and with each other. In this game, every moment is connected to themes of loss, grief, and pain. It's inescapable, and at times, ends up being truly horrifying. Ghost of Thornton Hall deals with many of the same themes of Shadow at the Water's Edge, a family racked with grief, familial tensions, disagreements, and fights. The one thing that Thornton Hall does differently, though, is having the tragic death brought about by one of the family. Shadow at the Water's Edge approaches things from a tragic accident angle, while Ghost of Thornton Hall explores the hate and jealousy angle. What are people really capable of when they feel like they're going to lose everything? when someone else has everything you want and you feel you have nothing at all. It's a relatable feeling, which is perhaps why this game ends up being so dark. Ghost of Thornton Hall makes us really wonder and think about jealousy, hate, resentment, and loneliness up close and personal. So there you have it, fellow detectives, my ranking of the Nancy Drew games according to darkness. I'm curious to know if you notice a pattern among your favorite games as you look at the categories. Do you tend to prefer darker, more mature games, lighter, more fun games, or a mix of both? My favorites are scattered across all the categories, which is so interesting to me. I think this underscores the importance of making games that target a variety of different themes, topics, and heaviness levels. While I love the deep and dark storytelling of Ghost of Thornton Hall, I'm also obsessed with the more lighthearted plot of Warnings at Waverly Academy, and the best of both worlds approach of Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake. This also brings to mind the importance of achieving what you set out to achieve. If you want to do a kidnapping, it should be more intense. 
If your game centers around tornadoes, it should be pretty terrifying. The tone should match the topic, and a variety of tones across a series is ideal. But what do you think, fellow detectives? Do you agree with how I sorted the games? Any games you would move to different places? Let a wizard kitten know in the comment section down below. If you really enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button or tipping me for the video with a super thanks next to the download button right beneath the video. If you would like to come join a fantastic group of fellow detectives at Mystique Manor as a patron for the channel, gain access to exclusive content, and support the making of more content like this, please check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten. I also have channel memberships with exclusive badges and emojis to use during streams and in the comment section. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming an official fellow detective, click join next to the subscribe button. Please feel free to follow the channel on Instagram or Discord, linked in the description box down below. And as always, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Nancy Drew and Cozy Game content. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.